Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about how differential equations comes into picture when you talk about radioactive substances or say radiocarbon dating. Okay, so that's what we are going to see today. So what are radioactive substances? So radioactive substances are those where the atoms decays naturally. Okay, that means they decay exponentially. So as the time go passes, the amount decreases naturally. Then such substances are called as radioactive substances. So what I want to say is now how exponential is coming into picture because suppose if y of t, y at the given time t, it is the amount of the substance present. Okay, so what is y? It is amount of the substance present at the given time t. Then what will be my dy by dt? It is the rate of change. It is the rate at which the amount of substance is changing over the given time. Then we know that this is proportional. Okay, so the rate at which amount is changing is proportional to the given amount. And when I remove this proportionality sign, this is equal to k. So what I have is dy by dt is equal to k times y, where k is called as the proportionality constant. Now in this scenario, since the amount is decreasing, so therefore this rate of change will be negative. Here I will have a negative sign. Now where my k is positive, so I will have a negative sign because it is decaying in nature. Okay. And now once you have the differential equation, you have a very nice method that you can apply, which is called as a variable separable method. You can separate the variables. You integrate. So this is ln of y is equal to minus kt plus some constant, say d. And when I take exponential on both sides, I have y of t is equal to e raised to d into e raised to minus kt. Let me call e raised to d as some another constant. So y of t is c into e raised to minus kt. So this is what the solution to the given problem is. Okay, so this is the differential equation we get for a radioactive substance. And when you solve by variable separable, this is the answer you have. Okay, now suppose for example, you have a radioactive substance whose initially suppose you have some say, say 0 0.5 grams. You have some substance and this is the quantity. Okay, so from here, what do I get? So what is given to me initially, it is 0 0.5. So when time is 0, amount is 0 0.5. So when I put this over here, 0 0.5 is c into e raised to 0. So your c is 0 0.5. So your y of t is what? 0 0.5 e raised to minus kt. Where k is some constant. Once you have the value of k, you plot the graph, you get the exponential graph. And what is this k? Well, it's, it's not fixed. Like it keeps on changing as your substance will change. And usually you find it by the experiments. You perform experiments on the radioactive substances and then you get the value of K. So for radium, this data I have taken from the crazy book. So for radium, K is 1.4 10 raised to minus 11 second inverse. Okay, so this is a solution. You put the value of K over here. You get the solution for this radium substance. Okay, that's one thing. Now suppose if I want to find the half-life period. Now what is half-life? It is the time the substance take to reduce to half of its quantity. Okay, so that means uh, I want to find time when my y is half of the original quantity. Suppose 0 0.5 was given to me. So in that when this will happen, that means this is 0 0.25. So at what time my y will be this much? That means what is the half life period? half lifetime for the rad radium substance. So when you put the value over here, you get 0 0.5 by 2 equals 0 0.5 into e raised to minus 1.4 10 raised to minus 11 t. So this is nothing but 0 0.5. So ln of 0 0.5, I remove exponential, minus 1.4 10 raised to minus 11 t. And when you do this, when you do this division, your answer comes out to be, I have done the calculation, 41510512900. So this much time it will take to reduce this substance to 0 0.25 uh, uh, seconds. 
okay this many seconds because the unit is second inverse so this is second if you want you can convert it to minutes or uh, number of days or whatever so yeah this much time it will take to reduce half of the given quantity 0.5 so that's how one can play with the radioactive substances and the differential equations let me take one more example on radiocarbon dating so here is a problem that we are going to see now so in september 1991 the famous ice man oetz a mummy from neolithic period of stone age found in the ice of oetz labs is the name oetz and uh, well question is when did oetz approximately live and die if the ratio of carbon 14c6 to 12c6 is 52.5 percent of that of a living organism okay so that's what we want to see that how for how many years we live and die so what information is given to us in the atmosphere and in living organism the radio the ratio of 14c6 to 12c6 is constant so when organism dies its absorption of 14c6 by breathing and eating terminate and this is to help us to estimate the age of a fossil by comparing the radioactive carbon ratio so to do this we will need to know the half life period of 14c6 which is nothing but 5715 years is the reference and what is my y not it is the initial ratio of 14c6 to 12c6 so now let's try to solve this problem okay so from the question we know that it's a this is the differential equation the radioactive same thing which we saw earlier so this is a differential equation we have you solve by variable separable this is what we have let me call y at 0 as y not okay the initial thing so i have y of t is y not e raised to kt so this is the differential equation i get when my t is 0 i get c to be y not now what is given to you 14 c6 to 12 c6 this is nothing but 52.5% of the living organism this is what is given to you right and also what is your y not it is the initial value it is the initial value of this ratio 14 c6 to 12 c6 the initial ratio of i would say initial ratio of 14 carbon 6 to 12 c6 okay so this is what i have now first we will find the value of k and then we are going to use this condition to find the value of y now we are going to find the value of k for that we are going to use that half life period okay so what is given to me half life so when y of t is half of y not this is y not e raised to k and what is t is given to be 5715 so when you cancel this i mean you take ln on both side so ln of 0.5 is nothing but k into 5715 and i have done the calculation k comes out to be uh, minus 0.0001213 this is what your k comes out to be and therefore if you put this value over here so this is y not e raised to minus 0.0001213 times t good so using half life we found the value of k great now we want to use this condition so what is given to you your y of t is 52.5% of y not so what i will have is 0.52.5% means 0.525 is equal to e raised to minus 0.0001213t you simply put the value here this is what you get Now again, you take ln on both sides. So ln of 0.525 upon minus 0.0001213 is equal to t. So when you solve this, your t comes out to be 5312. So therefore, the mummy died around 5000 years ago. So that's how one can use differential equations to find the the death period or the dk of the radioactive substances and all those stuff so i hope this example is clear if you have any doubt then you can ask me in the comment section thank you